Hi everyone, so we just started our sound unit um, with my second, he's between second and third grade. Um, so I kind of want to show you what I did to prepare our uh, sound unit for science. And I want to show you what the materials we're going to use, what we're going to focus on, and then um, some of the things that I've made um, to help him get started with this. So um, as part of our homeschooling journey, I did get two used science books. These are both science grade, I'm sorry, third grade science books. One is uh, this Mifflin and the other one's Harcourt Science. So um, I wanted to get these to kind of see where kids, what kids were doing um, in public schools with traditional science books. So um, when I picked up the science books and looked for sound, um, I didn't get much. I think what I got was... I think it was like one page. Um, let's see. There was this picture of a boom box that said sound energy. So thanks, that's not very helpful. And then there was a two page, um, a two page analysis of sound waves. And that was it. And uh, I was, oh, and I guess sound moving through matter. Um, it was It was very limited for the Mifflin book. And then when I looked at the Harcourt Science, again, third grade, I again got a small explanation on sound waves, and that's it. So one page. Um, so that, that wasn't very helpful. Um, next, I picked up our What Your Third Grader Needs to Know, and I got a much better explanation of sound. So... This was really great. They have several pages, sound and hearing, uh, how the ear works, which is really great. I wanted to incorporate as much as possible into this unit. Um, they have a whole excerpt on Alexander Graham Bell. So this was this was great. This was a, a couple of pages. Um, so I started, what, how I started our sound unit was um, by, I found a book. So this is uh, this is an analysis um, kind of this is a little book analyzing how we're studying sound that I'm making for my son so when he's older and we go back to sound he can kind of see what we did when we first um, started studying sound so the first thing we did we read simply sound science adventures with Jasper the origami bat um, this book I found on it was a free book on my son's Kindle so it was really great and he got really interested in it because it was a funny book about a uh, origami bat and sound waves. Um, then we read uh, we read the section on sound and what your third grader needs to know. So that gave him kind of um, some scientific background on on uh, what he just read. And also, since my son is so reluctant to handwrite, um, I've been keeping notes for him. I was going to have him keep a journal. Um, for science, but for science terminology and concepts that we cover, but he just absolutely refused. So I'm keeping the journal for him. And um, this, the whole point of this is learning and enjoying learning. And I'm not going to force him to do something he hates um, just because he should be doing this. I'd rather just move forward and, you know, meet him halfway. Um, because again, I want him to have fun. I want him to enjoy science. So I'm keeping the journal for him. Um, then we read Sound All Around, which was really great. This is a stage one, let's read and find out science book. And this book had a great section on echolocation and uh, sonar and decibels, which was really interesting. We had a really good discussion about that. He made some predictions, um, which he enjoyed. So this was a really good resource. Um, so, and then the last thing we did, oh, we, we talked about echolocation, decibels, and then finally I bought him um, Clang on Kindle. This is a brand new book by Darcy Pattison that just came out a few months ago. And this book was about Cla Claudney, who was a famous sound scientist, and we had a really great time reading this book. Again, I can't show it to you because it's on Kindle, but um, this was just kind of some practical, like this is a scientist who met with Napoleon Bonaparte and discussed sound. So he really loved that. So um, so other things that we're going to do, um, we're going to do the the portions of our science reader on sound. It starts. Where is it? Sounds all around. This is first grade, but it's pretty complicated, so I'm not too worried about the grades, just the context. 
um, Let's Hear It, Music of Guitars. My son plays the piano, so this is super interesting for him. Um, and that's what something else the Clang book did was talk about how pianos work and how um, another instrument uh, that was invented by this, by Cla Claudine, um, let me see if he mentions it, I'm not sure I, oh, the clavi cylinder, so, um, which is basically like a piano but doesn't use strings, so that was really interesting. And then uh, Science in Your Pocket, Quiet to Loud. Um, so there's lots of good stuff in this journal that he loves, um, that he can do. Um, we have, I have some science experiments for him. I have this old book that I got that comes with tons of experiments on sound. So, um, it also came with all the pieces. Um, I got this at a thrift store. So we're going to do these experiments. We kind of started this, but, uh, it wasn't working out as easily as I thought. So we kind of stopped the experiment and decided to get back to it later. And then I also got him 101 Great Science Experiments. And this book also has some really great um, science experiments on sound. So we're definitely going to do all these. And I would like him to map them out in his science journal um, if I can get him to. If not, I'll probably end up doing it for him as he tells me what to write. Um, I have a couple magic school buses. I have magic school bus explores the senses because I want to cover ears, how ears work, how ears hear sound. Um, a reader that I want my son to read. Um, his re he's still struggling with reading and writing, so I have a variety of sources. And then I want to talk about bats with him. I have a few books on bats and echolocation. I have um, another reader on echo uh, on bats, and then a chapter book from the magic schoolhouse. I'm sorry, magic school bus on bats. And then also I want to cover dolphins. I'm not sure which of these books will be better, but I want to I want I want to cover how dolphins hear and how dolphins um, make sound underwater and make sure that gets covered. And then I have a few other resources that I don't know if they're going to be at his level, but I found this really great book on sound, which will probably take some time to finish. And then these two books from Osborne, My First Science Experiment has a layout on sound, which we're going to cover. This is pretty simple. And then this book is all about light, sound, and electricity. So it's going to be a lot there. So, um, and then finally, um, I tried to figure out what else we had. Um, and I found some reading comprehension. Well, these are his reading comprehension readers, but they had some relevant parts. They have um, a section on American Sign Language I want him to read. Uh, because, again, I want to introduce him to sign language while we're talking about sound. I think that's relevant. And I want to kind of engage him in all the different related um, topics. So Alexander Graham Bell, I'd like to study him and have him read this passage. Um, there's also a passage on Helen Keller. We've already started studying Helen Keller, but I'd like to continue because, again, this is very fascinating and hearing and sound and not being able to hear. It's all connected. Um, and then finally, this reader, this is from first grade. It's a little easier, but still, the more he reads, the better. Um, two ears are better than one. This is a cute little excerpt and then a little one on Alexander Graham Bell. So anything else I can find on Helen Keller, I'll pull out. I unfortunately, I don't have anything else on Alexander Graham Bell, so we'll see what we we'll get there. But I'm that I thought I have tons of really great resources and my son is really excited about this unit. And unfortunately, the worst resources are the two public school textbooks um, that I found. They just they were so limited in information. And, you know, unfortunately, the, I was so excited to use these two books to kind of help us guide us and, um, you know, just fill in the gaps. But I feel like using these books just ends up leaving gaps. Like when we started the, the science book with my son, um, he had so many questions that weren't covered by this book. So we ended up just Googling um, answers to his questions. Uh, I feel like they just they leave more questions than they do answers. And they don't really guide the student along. along. They just kind of throw out um, vocabulary that doesn't mean anything to the child. So that's why I'm really excited to use these resources to um, push our unit forward. And we're going to cover a lot of really interesting topics as part of this. So thank you for watching.